So hi, everybody. And this is my welcome to 2020. So um, I have a few things that I have just kind of on the agenda. For myself, obviously, other things can be added here. So um, I'll just start. Maybe I'll start at the beginning. This could be kind of a larger issue, but um, kind of goals for 2020. I don't know if we want to start talking about these things now. Um, just what we hope to accomplish in this year. Like, see, how about that? Just let's just start with the hardest question right at the beginning. <laughs> Do we have things that we feel like we're not doing well? We want to remedy things that we are doing that maybe don't make any sense for us to do in the future. You know, just that kind of stuff. And I'll just leave it at that, or we can we can also just kind of pick this up. I think from a from a working group perspective, I, I think I'd like to increase the number of people engaged in the risk working group and the evolution working group. Okay. Um, those are the ones that I'm most active in, and um, I, I think I think evolution's pretty pretty strong. I think risk is sometimes a smaller group, so I'd like to you know I'd like to see some of the working groups continue to increase the engagement they get from the community okay. or to evolve to be more what the community needs you know maybe we need to maybe maybe some of these working group maybe like risk is just uh, a call or it becomes too much i would add to the value also okay. risk and value both i just put a general and comment and i and common i think <laughs> we could use extra participation and lots of working groups I didn't even put the names of the working groups in the comment. I just put increase number of people in the working groups. So um, I completely agree. I think this is kind of something that we're always working for. Um, I always like to hope that things like Chaos Con, I mean, we'll talk about it later, but I think we have like 80 people coming. You know, maybe we can be pretty <laughs> aggressive in trying to encourage people to participate in those weekly meetings or at least attend on, on occasion. So, um, you know, but those are my thoughts. Um, any other? Yeah, can I suggest one thing here? Of course. Uh, there are work group meetings. Um, how about, and, and there's the community meeting, of course, and then yeah. how about um, a meeting that is, you know, uh, branded to the majority of the 80 people that will be coming uh, I don't know what, what, what level of stakeholder in the project you qualify them as, but if you made a slot mm -hmm. for X and X is 80 or the majority of 80 people, um, you might you know, get them to, you know, attend, you know, and be present and then they would be, okay, so where do I go to, you know, hack on this for that? And, you know, it's like a gateway meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be every week. It could be once a month, bi-weekly, depends on, on, you know, participation, yeah. I guess. Yeah, um, that's that's a good idea. I, I mean, just listening to you talk, Sal, I was thinking, I mean, something even just to advertise on Twitter. And I'd be happy to run that meeting, just kind of an onboarding meeting is, is kind of what I'm hearing you talk about. Like, here's the structure of the project. Here's who we are. Uh, yeah, and, and bring your questions, you know, uh, um, um, community updates, not not within the chaos community, but the uh, user community of the chaos um, yeah. um, output. So, yeah. you know, people who use the metrics and projects uh, yeah. have a once a month meeting, sure. talk to other people who use the metrics in their projects, and then uh, there would be like updates from projects and updates from chaos. Yeah. Um, and, you know, trying to pull people towards participating directly on metrics they feel could improve in some way or are missing. Um, then you get them into the respective um, working group. What are people's thoughts on that? I mean, this would be a meeting that probably I would, maybe just one person from this group would be part of, you know? Yeah, one or two, I think yeah. it makes sense, right? Um, if, if there's a theme for every month, there's a theme of one working group, then it's co-convened uh, by a representative of the respective working group. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I work hard to have no meeting, fewer meetings on my calendar, but 
in an effort to try to increase participation with the working groups. This may be something that's, that's a good idea. What, do people have thoughts on that? Silent. I think it's a good idea. Okay. You could just use the time from one of the, uh, the weekly hangouts. Yeah, like just this, like the last Friday of every, yeah, or, or Friday, <laughs> the last Tuesday of every month, or something along those lines. Right. the The first Friday is, or the first Tuesday is the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, monthly the the monthly call, right? And then have the last one be the, uh, like the onboarding call. Yeah, that might be. So you don't have to add another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Good. Um, a goal for any other thoughts on on this? Um, a goal for me constantly, at least starting kind of last year, is always thinking about how we can get the work that's being done in the working groups into um, kind of real world implementations. So whether that's through advancing perhaps the DNI badging program or whether it's working to get the metrics as deployed in Augur uh, slash Grimoire, not slash, but at Augur and Grimoire Lab. Um, I'm always thinking about, you know, so the work that's being done in the working groups, a lot of that is kind of at this metric abstract level, right? And the hope is, is that those metrics can find the light of day in, in some practice or some piece of technology that other people can have access to. So simply having a metric in a working group is great and it's, it's great to think about it, but getting that metric to actually change the way that people think about community health is always something that's on my mind. Um, so I'm always thinking about the work that's being done in any of the working groups and, and how that can be brought to bear as something meaningful for people. I don't know if people have thoughts on that, but, but yes, whoever's taking that note, thank you. The practical application of the metrics. And that's that's honestly one of the big pushes for me around the DNI badging program. That was me taking the note. Thank uh, you. I would agree with that, and I would uh, kind of related to that. I would kind of like to see kind of a little more uh, kind of marketing outreach. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe practical application of these metrics and then maybe some blogs or some uh, some marketing where we where we talk about how these these metrics really are usable and yep. this is how people are using them. Okay. Or promotion, I suppose, would be the word. Mm -hmm. Um, um, is this, Matt, uh, hey. related to the discussion we had before? Yeah, yeah so Matt. actually I was going to, if you weren't on, but I see you're on, I was going to actually bring up what we had talked about just in the prior meeting. Okay. Well, yep. go ahead. Yep. So in the prior meeting, um, we had, the meeting right before this is the weekly call um, for Grimoire Lab. And we had talked about goals um, for Grimoire Lab as well. And what we had kind of come up with was doing outreach, probably via Twitter, to ask people what are the use cases that they would like to see um, as being expressed through Grimoire Lab, right? And Augur, you can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are the things that people would like to see um, as expressed through this technology? Um, kind of an open call. Uh, and then over the course of the month, kind of working to articulate what, one, what that use case is, um, but then also putting that use case into practice in, in Grimoire Lab. So Daniel, you can kind of add to this if you'd like, but it's kind of seeing these use cases through as deployed in Grimoire Lab. Mm. Yeah, so we were looking for ways of having easier the path to contribute to Grimoire Lab. Um, um, we see based on technology that perhaps the easiest path is to contribute into the form of dashboards. But even for this, you need to understand the data model and create a chart and then a panel or dashboard, etc. 
So we thought that perhaps uh, if we open a call for everyone on the internet and say, hey, uh, what, what would you like to see uh, implemented into Grimoire Lab in the following month or couple of months, and then we can give ideas or we can have a blog post or, or anything related to this and say, uh, I don't know, there's this velocity metric that uh, everyone was talking about like a year ago, a couple of years ago, or I would like to see this DNI um, evolution thing, whatever, or this evolution from the evolution working group, or I would like to see maintenance metrics because I wouldn't have any or about time to close or to understand stuff. So this may help to address this, this, the discussion in the first place. So then we can have like, I don't know how many votes, maybe we have two, maybe we have 20, but uh, we, we can go for, for the most voted action and say, okay, we choose this one. And then we start working on this because based on previous experiences, uh, when Georg was doing some charts and the panel for when, uh, when implementing in a dashboard the, uh, from the evolution working group for the weekdays and hours of the day activity, took like three, four sessions, so three, four hours. So it means like in a month, we may have implemented one of them. And if we have people from the community that voted in Twitter, so we keep updating them through Twitter, perhaps at some point they join the community because they will come with their ideas into the open discussion during one of these sessions. So this is what we were discussing. <laughs> And I'll, I'll add to that too. I'm going to pull up, um, Daniel, the link that you had given me to the panels. So I'm going to share this link here. Oops. So this is a link that was shared in the last meeting. And these are the available panels. This is kind of like a marketplace of panels that can be deployed in Grimoire Lab with the, I'll just call it the base functionality of Grimoire Lab without really making further modifications behind the scenes to the data. And so also as these use case requests are coming in and the dashboards are being produced, being able to contribute those dashboards and, and consume those dashboards in an easier way um, is something we talked about as well. So if you take a look at this list, right, you see the panels here. So if I had say GitHub issues, like how is that panel there that's being shown? First of all, how, if I created a panel on my own, how could I actually contribute it so others could use that panel? And then if I see a panel that I like, how can I easily um, bring that into my Grimoire Lab instance? So kind of that process of contributing and consuming these panels and, and improving that process. Did I get that right, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, th that's, that's absolutely right. So we need to improve for 2020. If that's the case at the end, uh, this process to contribute back um, how to import and export panels and so on in your own Grimoire Lab instance, and then how to bring newcomers to the community through creating awareness around this storyline, for instance. Yep. Yeah. And in Augur, the corollary would be APIs, uh, mm. not panels, really. We, need the, we would provide front end, but uh, mostly we were, we're specifying the data service oh yeah so i mean is that maybe we'll sean do you have things that you're it's a different model of um yep. metrics so i would i would we think of the the api as the canonically tested source of data and we do provide uh, not panels but pages or graphs for each of the metrics however that isn't the central thing that people build to. Um, do, you, do you have a link, Sean, that has a list of the APIs? Yeah, I do. Um, let me make sure it's there because I deleted it earlier by mistake. Um, so but I mean, this, it might be the same. Uh, yeah. This Grimoire Lab page that you shared is, is 
really great. I'm and I'm assuming that uh, that Sean is going to share a page that's similar. Yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm wondering API doc, which is less, I think, human. This is it's just consumed in a different way. I'm I'm wondering if there's a place that this could be housed on the website. I think at least a link would be appropriate. There's not a there's not a whole lot of Grimoire Lab or Augur on the website currently. No. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be really it would be nice if we could have at least a page dedicated to each of them. Uh, and I, I don't know if it would include this information. Sorry, this that's maybe a little unrelated, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't like put that comment in the notes. <laughs> I have a new like web page thing. But it makes sense, definitely. Hmm. No. <laughs> okay, I put that in the notes. Have you shared anything, Sean? Um, just about to. Okay. I think. Yes, I, I mean, maybe it would be the same sort of question that we were just talking about with the marketplace. Like, is it? Okay, no problem, Don. Um, I, mean, I think it's a, a question of. I mean, what would what what's been helpful to us is having people working with us and trying to use the metrics and seeing um, seeing how they're useful uh, and then iterating and revising. I think we have, we don't have customers in the sense that Grimoire Lab does, <clears throat> but, you know, I don't know if this, Oops. yeah, so this is, this is not, this is like a standard API doc where it's basically just explaining how do you call it and what the data is. Um, and then there's, I think, a reference to old, outdated links now for the chaos definitions that we need to update. So maybe the same question would hold on that marketplace with the panels, that like how could people contribute? I don't know if that's on your roadmap at all for 2020, how people could contribute new API calls and- Yeah, it is. We have actually docs um, okay. that, that explain that. So maybe it's just you know, sharing those docs or promoting those docs in some way. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Sean, did you have any other things for Augur that you wanted to bring to bear for 2020? And, uh, I, think, I think for team. For 2020, I, I think mostly our, our, our objective right now is to try to have a complete complete implementation of chaos metrics and contribute back to the development of chaos metrics. Okay. So. Okay. Um, Don, I know you're dropping off. Did you have any like <laughs> urgent to do's for 2020 that were on your mind at all? Put you on the spot? No, not really. I mean, I think I think for me, it's kind of growing participation in yeah. the working groups and doing whatever we can to kind of make them more more inclusive and interesting to people. Okay. Um, it's also I think it'd also be good for you know to improve kind of the number of metrics that we're getting out with each release. So like the first one felt first release felt really small. This one's feeling a lot better. I think we can continue to kind of incrementally increase the the number of metrics. I would yeah. like to see, especially out of the common group. I'd like to see more metrics. Okay. Um, we had, I think we're at, um, I think we're at 39 metrics at the moment. Just uh, walking through them the other day. It's fairly, to me, that's a fairly decent number, but I, yeah. Yeah, Wait, well, yeah it's good. I just think that there are so many more that we could, sure. that we could define. I mean, even if, like, I, I know I've said this a bunch of times before, but you know, even if we just defined all of the metrics that Grimoire Labs and Augur actually use in yes, the product, that, that would be, that would be well. fantastic. Yeah. And that, that information lives in a Google Doc somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Google I think the Evolution Working Group has a Google Doc that started to do that. Yep. Um, on that, to that point, I do sometimes like wonder like the number of metrics and making sure that for each release we can um, 
attend to the volume of metrics. You know what I mean? Because like in each candidate release, we actually essentially re-release what was in the prior release. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like, particularly this time around, because we changed the template. Um, so everyone has taken a little bit of time to take a look at. Mm -hmm. So just, I don't know, that balance of increasing the number of metrics, because that's what we do, because <laughs> that's the, like the goal of the chaos project, um, while also maintaining the metrics to be current and relevant, while also, well, I don't know, just there's a lot of parts there, right? As, as, as you know, as we scale, it gets more complicated. Kevin, do you have a comment? Uh, additionally, I would say that some of our metrics are more complete than others. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we kind of need to pay attention to, like once the metric is released, we we can't just ignore it. I think we do need to kind of go back and maybe finish up some of these metrics that are not in a finished state or, or not, uh, they need to continually evolve, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I, going through and reading them, some, some metric descriptions are like a sentence and some metrics descriptions are super rich and long. <laughs> they almost take yeah. a while to read. <laughs> so some balance there. Okay. And I, I know one of the things that was done when we were cleaning things up earlier this year was we made some of the metrics more succinct. We did. Yeah. Which I think was super helpful. I think it's easier to digest succinct things, yes. Yes. Um, all right, cool. Um, any other like, things for 2020? I mean, I, there's kind of the usual suspects, I think. Um, I think this year, 2020, I have it on the agenda, but we're going to participate in an outreachy for the first time this year. Um, I'm getting that the chaos project um, proposal submitted. I had just a few questions on there. Um, I think we'll still do Google Summer of Code would be my guess that that has worked extremely well in the past. These are goals yeah. for 2020. Um, I'm thinking that um, Chaos Con North America and Europe still seems like a reasonable cadence for everybody. Doesn't seem like we need more. No. So then this would be uh, February and the end of June, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. puts them kind of close together, but I don't, I don't necessarily see a better option, frankly. Hmm. No, I mean, what else is there in August at this point? Not a whole lot. No, yeah, the only other thing is Os OSCON at the end of July, but I feel like that conference is go is not as robust as it used to be, and fewer okay. people are attending every year. Okay. I I didn't submit to it and don't plan to attend, and this is probably okay. the first time that's going to happen for a long time. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and the Open Source Summit North America, it, just, it does make a ton of sense. I mean, is that we can co-locate with that conferences. Yeah, for, for them definitely seems to be like a place to be for, for this conference. We just run out yeah. of tickets. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome and, and sad, but <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> Um, all right, cool. Well, I'll just kind of keep this comment open around 2020, obviously. I don't think anybody knew I was going to ask that question. So <laughs> if you think of things um, before next week, of course, we can still add them. Um, so the, oh, thank you. So for the um, candidate metrics release, I think we're all pretty good on that. Um, if you have a chance in your working groups, I'd ask that you if you haven't already done so, spend a little bit of time to take a look at any issues that have been posted, <clears throat> maybe even just go through the metrics yourself. I think that would be time well spent in the working groups before um, in the next week or two for the, for the closure on that. Um, Don, I think all of yours in common are done, so I think everything's good. And, and we should just remind people that the deadline to get our changes PR'd in is the end of next week, end of this week, the 20, what was it? Sorry, the 24th, right, Kevin? Is that 10 days. 10 days. So the 24th is the deadline. Oh. Then from there, that should give Kevin enough time to get them ready for ChaosCon. We should be good there. 
Um, in regards to the, the common metrics, by the way, there, uh, I did make another uh, comment uh, to common, so I don't think they are actually all taken care of. Okay. No, I don't think so either. I did I did two of them, and then I had questions for people about oh, a couple oh, of others. Some links. So, um, yeah, it was mostly links, but I should have time to, to PR those in next week. Okay, cool. Um, great. So that was it has been a great effort. Um, ChaosCon, does anybody, what's the current state of affairs? Mostly just for telling people with, so basically we sold out of tickets. It's so mad. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Did you did you want to talk about the release notes real quick? Well, somebody gave me a link, so that's all I needed. <laughs> so I did. So I did give you a bunch of links there. Okay. Uh, but I, I do want to point out that uh, there are there's a link for each working group, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we need to uh, remind the working groups to to go and actually uh, make some comments on that issue. Those issues so that you, you do know what to add to the release notes? And the idea was that we were going to have the release notes done in time for the full comment period. Oh. Um, but I think we forgot to tell you that. And you volunteered to do them, and I think we never told you that we also wanted to put those into the review period. So okay. if you could maybe, maybe pull some of those together and give people some time to review them. That might be cool. If not, I guess we'll, we'll do better next, next release. Oh, I can do it this week. I just, I needed that pointer <laughs> as to what to do. I should get them done by end of day tomorrow. That shouldn't be a problem. Well, as, as far as I know, the only group that has added, added the release notes to that issues that I created is the, is the common group. Can you so give I'm, me an example of this? What are you talking about yes. when you say this issue? Okay. Well, let me just, uh, <clears throat> I have to drop. I'll see you there all you later. Go. You're done. So I just uh, put a, the GitHub link to the chaos issue. So each working group has a release notes issue. Okay. Uh, within that issue, uh, the space is basically reserved for the working group to go in and basically make a list of the high level changes that occurred right. in the repository. Uh, the reason we did this was to help you create the release notes. So for okay. for common, uh, you we, added that from the we added way. we restructured and renamed focus areas. Uh, organizational diversity w remains unchanged from the previous release, and then we added three new metrics activity. Okay. So uh, the thought there was that if every working group goes in and makes that list for you, it'll make your release notes document uh, very easy to create. Okay, thank you. But you you may need to encourage some of the uh, working group maintainers to. Uh, well, this is helpful. That put link together is helpful. that list. Yep, and then what I'll do is I can I can just attend the meetings. I plan on being in a lot of the meetings, so I can just ask that question. Then, actually, is anybody gonna is who's going to DNI the DNI weekly meeting right now? Sala, you are. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I teach class right at that time, mm -hmm. so I just I can't make it. Yeah. So, could you ask the DNI group next yeah. Monday? If, if 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 anybody shows up, because <coughs> last week, uh, there was a couple of us. Um, um, okay. This week there was just me. So. But I think I think a number of people have been on vacation up until like yesterday. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, Georg will be there next week. Yeah, and I'll we can I'll start promoting these a little bit more again. Usually, the first of the year it takes a few like reminders as to what the times are. You could also propose a different time if that works for you. I mean, I yeah, I'm happy to have that meeting move. I'd like to attend it, but I just yeah. I teach at ten thirty. Yeah, it's not like everybody was there, right? So I think we can easily move the time okay. uh, because you know people okay. could be there then. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Um, okay. So, Kevin, is that good? Are you good on that one? Sorry. Are you good on the release note comments? Yes. Okay. Um, Chaos Con. How, what's our current number of people that are coming? Attendees? Seventy. Maxed out, and I think capacity was eighty. Yep, we're at eighty. Uh, capacity is actually at seventy, and we yeah. are we are overbooked to eighty currently. Let's see. 
Let's just keep overbooking. <laughs> I can sit in the hall. That's okay. So that's one one thing that we all hate about overbooking in planes. <laughs> so we need to be right. back like 500 bucks. Let's throw yoga mats on the floor. Perfect. Do that. Shit well, I, I remember one of the very first years, uh, Brian, you were there as well. So we were so packed that there were people standing up at the very end of the room. Yeah. But I think nowadays, because security reasons, probably they are not allowing this. Yeah, I was thinking like fire code. Does Europe have fire code? Issues? Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> so, let's see. <clears throat> I, I suspect we'll, if we have 80 register, we will have no shows. I have to imagine. So, um, anyway. Um, okay, well, that's great. I think the schedule's all set. Is that correct? Can somebody? Yes. Yeah, the schedule is set. I can share that with you if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and Red Hat has is providing sponsorship. I don't know if you know this, Brian, but you are. Yeah, I know. Is it Red Hat or is it Veronica? It's Ruth who's who reached out to me. Oh, is it Ruth now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw she cleared that out. I just didn't know whose name was showing up. Thank you for that. No worries. Thank you. Wait, did we put the schedule on here? Uh, sorry, my computer, my, there it is. Okay. The browser didn't want to connect to the page for some reason. There it is. Mm. Oh, we need to add, I'll put a pull request in. We need to add the Red Hat logo as a sponsor as well. I have the most updated one too, Brian, I think, unless it's changed in the last six months. Oh, no. okay. No, it's just a plain hat. Yep. Okay. Oh, good. I'm still last. So that's a great idea. <laughs> hey, you're not right after lunch. I think that's even worse. Yeah, but I'm right before beer, so no pressure. Yeah, mm -hmm. bring beer with you, and then there would doesn't have to be a transition at all. I won't have enough for 80 people, although now... Red Hat could sponsor beer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sure, I'm sure Ruth won't mind me slapping that on my corporate card. No problem. I'm from Wisconsin. I'm always gunning for the free beer. It'll be totally fine. I'll tell her it's your idea, Sean. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I will get that in there. Um, okay. Okay. Um, great. And then I think so. Any other comments on Chaos Con? Okay. I mean, it's. I think we're we're getting set. I think Georg's doing. I think he's been in contact with the hotel with respect to lunch. So I think that's moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Um, oh, do we have... Real quick question: If we wanted to update the bio on this, who do we contact? Kevin. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll send you a note. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then Daniel, do you know like? Should we be bringing any technology with us? Um, so they typically have uh, Vmair and PGA or HDMI, I don't remember. Depends on the year. Um, the adapters, and that's all. And um, well, the adapter for European uh, stuff. Okay, everybody should have plenty of those. Yeah, that should be should be enough. Um, the only thing I remember from uh, the old years was that um, they had some issues with the Beamer depending on the laptop. Okay. But I don't think during the very last, so two years ago, it worked. So that's okay. all. The only thing perhaps for the next year is to consider another place. So we came back to EVs because it was, uh, well, convenient place and cheaper, much cheaper. Um, well, it's a good place, but if we are well, if we're sold out, maybe we should consider any other place, but yes, okay. for the discussions. For next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good.
I had another question, but I think that's about it. Um, all right, great. I think most every, a lot of people are gonna be there. So it's good to see everybody. Um, and then uh, Google Summer of Code, I had a couple things. Google Summer of Code, the organization application, I think was starts today. Um, really the only, only question that I have is the Linux Foundation appears that they're gonna be submitting kind of as, a, as an organization, mm. but we could also submit as the Chaos Project. I, I would kind of prefer to just submit as the Chaos Project. Yeah, I think that's better for us. Yep. Um, so I don't know if people have thoughts on that. You understand what I'm saying? So basically one of the options is we just do the Chaos Project like we've done in the past two years. We just submit as the Chaos Project and we have, the other is that the Linux Foundation submits as an organization and under <coughs> the Linux Foundation as an organization, they have a bunch of different projects, some which are kernel projects, some which are chaos projects, some which might be auto-grade Linux projects, some which might be, you see what I'm saying? So they kind of house all of the 180 some odd projects that might wanna submit. Yeah, if we don't have to add that layer into our process, that sounds like it's better for us. I think so too. I think it's a little easier logistically too to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll get that that in. Um, if you are interested in in mentoring for Google Summer of Code again this year, I mean, Sean, looking at you yeah. certainly because yeah. it is it is code related. Um, Daniel, I don't know if folks from Grimoire Lab want to participate again this year. I'm suspecting yes, but I think so. Yep. <laughs> I would imagine it was, I thought it was a great success last summer. So I thought we had some really nice contributions, some really nice students. Um, so maybe when you're talking amongst yourselves, you could identify who those people might be. Who, who would be interested in mentoring again this summer? Kind of on the Grimoire Lab side of things. Um, and then others, yeah, go ahead. I was saying I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I will ask internally. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then, if others on this call want to be want to participate as Google Summer of Code mentors, just honestly, just let me know. It's pretty easy to add people um, and be engaged in that process. And then the other one is um, we're going to do Outreachy this year. So we had talked about this in the past. Outreachy costs. So Google Summer of Code actually ends up putting funds into the Chaos Project in addition to paying the students. Outreachy, the Chaos Project provides those dollars to the Software Freedom Conservancy or the Outreachy Project. Um, and those dollars are used to pay the, the mentee <coughs> their stipend. So we, as a Chaos Project, pay $6,500. $5,500 of it goes to the student. $500 goes to the student for travel. So to talk about the work that they did over the course of the summer, and then 500 goes to support the administrative overhead of running the outreachy program. So we've talked about this in the past, um, and I'll be getting that submitted. Um, I'm gonna probably be reaching out to a few people um, just because we need, we're gonna need a little like Google Summer of Code project ideas. Um, as to, as to what folks can work on. So I'll just start a, a separate thread. If you're interested in participating in the outreachy program, let me know um, and I can make sure to include you in that thread. I have a few people that I'll just send this out to. <coughs> anyway, so cool. So that's outreachy. Um, and honestly, that's it for me today. Goals for 2020, outreachy, chaos con metrics, a lot of good things. Um, does anybody else have things they want to bring up today? Nothing? Going once, going twice? All righty. Uh, well, I encourage you all, if you're involved in a working group, to start like, like being there, because I know that the first of the year um, <laughs> can, be, can be sparsely populated, so I encourage everybody to participate in those working groups. Um, I'm around now. Obviously, we'll kind of take a, a break a little bit when Chaos Con and FOSDEM goes on again, because I think a lot of us are going to be in Belgium. Um, so anyway, encourage you to participate in those working groups over the course of the week. And we'll see many of you soon, or 
in the next working yep. group. Um, yep, it's good to see everybody. Good to see you all. Bye. See you later. Bye.